So my excuse for buying a third armored car is that I'm actually building an RC car racetrack, which was originally designed to accommodate 110 scales, but also 116th and 118th. It turns out that there's too much loose debris to accommodate those smaller scale cars. And not all my friends have RC cars of their own, especially 110 scale. So I figured I'd take advantage of this deal that I found on Tower Hobbies for this Arma Mega. I picked it up for 165 shipped. That was after tax, free shipping, and it came to my door in literally two days. It's been a little bit over a year since I bought the 3S BLX, and I've almost forgotten how beautiful this thing looks like up close when it's brand new and clean. <laughs> glossy body, glossy tires, looks amazing. I know some of you may be looking at the 3S BLX versus the Mega Typhon and believe that it's only the electronics that are different, but there are a lot more differences between the two other than the electronics. So we're gonna dig into that and take a look right now. Okay, the first difference, we don't even need to take off the body. We're gonna look at the turnbuckles. So for the 3S BLX, they are adjustable. This one adjusts the camber, meaning the wheel in this direction. And then this turnbuckle adjusts the toe, meaning like in this direction. So where compared to the Mega version, the turnbuckles are not adjustable, they're fixed. So before you quickly dismiss a fixed one versus the adjustable one, the adjustable one, this is metal. So in cases where it has a big collision, um, which did happen to my big rock as well as this Typhon, this bent, which is not a big deal. You take it apart and you bend it back and it's, it's not a huge flaw or problem to fix. But this one, because it's fully plastic, it's most likely in the same impact and same force is gonna bend and just bend back and not have to remove or fix in any way. So before you dismiss this as not adjustable and not good, just know that there are benefits to a fixed version. Everything else from the outside is gonna be the same. So it's gonna be the same bumper, the same shocks, the same shock tower. The bodies are interchangeable, they're both according to Arma 1.8 scale. And so you can put the 3S Arma body on here and switch it vice versa. The tail, as you can see, is also the same. The Mega is not made of any sort of thinner material or anything that's not as suitable. So you would think that possibly a more expensive version would be better quality. Um, not so. So this one is still the same quality as the 3S BLX. Next, we're going to take this apart to see the inside. I can instantly tell that this is a brushed version versus brushless is the number of wires connected to the motor. So brushed versions will always have two wires. A brushless car will have three wires. Another difference with the Mega that you may not notice right away is that there is no center bearing, such as on the 3S BLX, where we do have a center bearing. This thing basically supports the center drive shaft, whereas this Mega version does not have that. This being operating on less power Arma, I suppose, felt it wasn't necessary to have that. And for the 3S BLX with more power, it does have, again, it does have the bearing and this support bracket. I happen to have an extra center bearing bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that right now. All right, so it does fit. Another major difference is that the shaft of this stock Mega or brushed motor is 3.175 millimeters compared to the 3S BLX, which is five millimeters. What that means is the pinion that you use for this, you're not gonna be able to reuse for a brushless motor that has a five millimeter shaft. So if you are, you are going to change to a brushless version, which will most likely have a thicker shaft of five millimeters, you're also going to need to buy a new pinion gear. And the pinion gear needs to match with the spur gear that's in here. And the spur gear is also different in the Mega versus the 3S BLX. The bag that is included with the Mega, as far as the parts and the instructions, is the same as the one from the 3S BLX. You get the same parts. This goes into here and this removes the wheels. And this can also help you remove the wheels. 
and we have extra spacers for the shocks that go in here. The transmitters are the same. Can you tell which is which? This is the 3SBLX, and this one is for the Mega. So they're both the Spectrum, exact same model. We're gonna remove the power module so we have an idea of what that looks like inside. Fourteen T pinion, and the spur gear is here. So what we notice is that there's no metal bracket. The three S B L X has a metal bracket that keeps this in place. But since uh, the Mega doesn't have that much voltage going through and it's not that powerful, we're not expecting that much uh, action <laughs> that would mess it up. Even though the red motor mount for three S B L X does bend on a regular basis. When you're reassembling this, you always want to turn these screws by hand so that you can feel if there's any cross threading. You don't want to take your screwdriver straight or drill rather straight to it without feeling for it. So when you're putting this back together, you want to make sure that the spleen here matches that inside there. If they're not matched correctly, they're not going to snap in place as easily or at all. The slipper clutch assembly here is also very different than the 3SBLX. So if you're gonna change to brushless, my recommendation would be to change the entire power module, including the one with the red bracket and also the 3S BLX uh, slipper clutch. So again, to kind of summarize, you're not going to be able to just change the motor and the ESC and then call this a 3S BLX. That's not exactly how this works. So if you are going to upgrade, that's definitely an option but as far as savings and value you're going to want to get the 3SBLX out of the box if you're going to save money and run the mega which is totally fine i actually bought this 2S car for a backyard dirt track which most people run 2S cars anyway so this is not going to be upgraded to a 3S whatsoever you're probably watching this video because you're considering spending the extra money for the 3SBLX versus the Mega and wondering if you got the Mega, what do you need to change to turn it into that guy? So if, if you're going to buy one knowing that you're going to run it 3S, as far as value and dollars, you're going to want to buy the 3S BLX out of the box and just run it. But just know that I have another video of all the issues that 3S BLX has. You're going to have those issues with this guy too, because you're essentially turning this into that. So there are benefits of reliability with a 2S rig. You're just running a lot less stress through the entire system. And of course you're gonna have lower miles per hour. It's gonna be a lot slower, but you're gonna, be ha you're gonna have a lot more reliability on a 2S rig versus a 3S. So again, if you're gonna try to decide between the two, there are reasons to get a 2S car. And for me, I bought this because First of all, it was on sale at Tower Hobbies for $150. Free shipping, tax, all in all, to my door, two days shipping actually, was $164 versus $330 plus tax. So <laughs> you can kind of do the math. Um, so this was a, a really good deal, and I plan to run this strictly on an RC backyard dirt track where... Most people run dirt track cars on 2S cars, using 2S cars anyway. So it's not underperforming and it's not like it's, you know, some people are ashamed or, or maybe uh, 
not confident in getting a 2S car because it's only 2S and everyone else has 3S or 6S or 8S. But just if you get this, there's a reason for it and there's a place for it. So don't be embarrassed or ashamed or think that you ought to be getting that. It really depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for reliability, I suspect this one will be a lot more reliable. I haven't run this yet, and that's why I was able to pull the module out, module out so easily because there's no dirt in it. But just knowing that this is a 2S car that maxes out at 30 miles an hour versus that car that is 3S and maxes out at 50 miles an hour and having run at least 100 batteries through that, I can tell you that that is fun while it lasts, but it's not necessarily super reliable. So reliability and the expense is gonna be just less power, um, but you're also saving a lot of money here. Don't underestimate the cost of batteries. The cost of a 2S battery is much cheaper than the cost of 3S batteries. And think about how many batteries you're gonna get and how many you'll really need. For me, I generally have six batteries six battery packs, um, three for myself and three for a friend who wants to run another BLX car with me. So if you're on a tight budget, then consider batteries. You know, you don't want to be that guy who buys a fancy real car and then forgets about the cost of insurance or a cost of gas. Okay. So the overall picture, you do want to include the cost of batteries in your budget. And so again, 2S batteries are going to be significantly cheaper than 3S ones. I do recommend though, that if you're gonna get new batteries for this, that you buy LiPo packs, as opposed to the nickel metal high drive that's in here. So that's gonna be essentially a free mod because you're not gonna have to buy any parts for it. You literally just gonna adjust the ESC and the instructions will show you how, so that you can run it on LiPo as opposed to nickel metal high drive.